Hello, huzzah, welcome back, everyone. I am the Friendly Neighborhood Dungeon Master, otherwise known as the FNDM, and this is Cold Hard Witch, a lawful, stupid RPG playthrough of the Rime of the Frost Maiden module by Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, friends, I have missed you. Let's go ahead and go around the table and see just who we have playing with us tonight. We have Buddy, who plays Xander, the wizard. Madeline, who plays Zolvana, the bard. Amy, who is Fariel, our drogue. Shale, who will not be joining us tonight, uh, but she plays Delphina, our cleric. And then Rodney, who is the dwarf flinging Flynn, the fighter. And last but never least, but also most sus, is Pike profane, playing the professor, him of the many tentacled hands. So, uh, <laughs> hey friends, it's so great to see you after our almost three month hiatus. I think it's time for us all to gather around the campfire. Because remember friends, the night is dark and full of errors. All right, friends. So it has been, God, 10 weeks since we last journeyed into the Dale, and things were looking a bit careless. Speaking <laughs> of which, uh, you found yourselves at the keep at Care Dineval, which is the farthest town along the East Way, uh, just south of, uh, of, Kel uh, of Kelvin's Carn. So in this town, you discover that the keep has been uh, occupied, taken over. Mm -hmm. These are questions that you didn't find the answers to just yet, but they are currently being held by the Knights of the Black Sword, who you discovered after talking to uh, their leader, Kadroth, that he's very interested in soliciting Zilvana for her assistance in helping to overthrow the Durgar menace that is happening throughout the Dale. Now you yourselves, oh my mighty harbingers, have, uh, have done a pretty handy job of taking care of the Durgar wherever you find them. But Kadroth is not necessarily being forthcoming with his answers. And in the night that you spend at the, at the keep, both Delphina and Zalvana were visited by a archdevil who asked for their assistance. Zalvana, in her innocence, graciously offered to help. And it was at this moment that she made a pact with the devil. Zalvana, in the final moments of our previous game, realizing that her friend was on the hook said that she would assist in any way that she could to help her friend. And so we find ourselves the next morning waking up to the repercussions of the night before. My friends, welcome back to Cold Hard Witch, episode 15, Dark Alliance? Uh. Mark? <laughs> Or slaughter? <laughs> dun, dun. Uh, are you going sure? to burn this mother to the ground? Are you so. sure it's not go get a warm cup of hot chocolate and bring gender? <laughs> hey, it are absolutely sure can be. Not wrong. Bounce to East Haven and set up shop? No. <laughs> no. If I ever go back to that town, East Haven. I will. No. <laughs> suddenly, suddenly, all of you are thinking, you know, East Haven doesn't sound so bad. Who doesn't does. love a winter festival? All right. So we find ourselves back at the keep at Care Dineval. Oh, so yes. you wake up in the Northeast Tower. Uh, things seem to be perfectly fine until you look over at Delphi's bed and realize oh. that she has been encased in a block of solid ice. Uh. Uh, does, does it seem as though she is okay? I mean, can we see her breathing or is, does it look so dire? Do we need to? So in the same way that uh, you saw the uh, show of hands, friends, how many of you talked with Hethel? That's the old lady. The, yeah, the, old, the old lady. lady. Old lady yeah. Upstairs. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The old lady that, that Pike was uh, so, so adamant to find. <laughs> 
Uh, so yeah, uh, much in the same way that when she expired and was then encased in a block of ice, this looks almost identical to that same block of ice. Uh, can I step over and just do a produce flame and see if I can like, if get it, like wave it over her and see if I can just make any, any difference in this, in this ice block. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Also friends, make sure you did get a long rest. So be sure you click those buttons on D and D beyond and then confirm that to get all of your HP back up to square yeah. because <laughs> just make sure you're at full health. Okay. Do it. Oh, I don't like the sound of that at all. Uh, you know what was going to happen. <laughs> I know. Hey, hey. <laughs> That's just why saying. we play. That's why we play. This is why we play. Exactly. So, ice to meet you all. Let's uh. begin. All right. So, friends, uh, Professor, you yeah. produce flame. Wave it over the top. Do you, how like are, do you like put your hand on it? Do you try to get the flame? Like, do you hold it next to it? What are you trying? Yeah, to do? I'm like just just next to it, trying to trying to heat up this ice block. See if I can melt any of it at all. It. As as you hold the flame to the ice block, the air around it, the sort of the steam or the mist that comes off it seems to just coalesce around the flame and it doesn't seem to do anything to the block of ice itself. It does not seem to melt. All right. If I... If I touch it, does it do anything? Do you touch it? Professor, yeah. always touching stuff, man. Professor. I'm just, I'm just, I'm in investigating and examining this, this block of ice. Okay. As much so, as uh, when you touch the ice, you do touch it. Yeah. So I put the flame out and just touch it. Roll a constitution. Can uh, I, can I smack, do you use your hand, just, uh, your only good remaining hand? Can I smack his hand? <laughs> <when he touches? laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah go, oh man. Yeah. Right. So, Off to a good start. Six. No, yeah. It's like, <laughs> so, uh, professor, give me a constitution save. Uh, it's a six. A six, okay. Six. Even though that is abysmally low, miraculously, <laughs> uh, nothing happens. Like you, you touch it and similar to like if your hand had just like a little layer of sweat on it, it, you stick a little bit to the ice, but your hand comes away and it's none the worse for the wear. But the block of ice has not melted. Can I do detect thoughts? Oh, yes. Yes, you absolutely can. That's a good move. All right, so you reach out. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, all right, come on, come on, kid. You're, come on, come on, come on. You're, you're, okay, you're, cool. you're so, in there. You're in there. So you're reaching out to Delphi, and what mm -hmm. are you, uh, what are you saying to her? Are, are you alive? Are you okay? Somewhat conscious? Is like any bit of you still here on this plane? So. As you, as you reach out to Delphi's mind, you don't hear anything from Delphi, but you hear this sort of cracking of ice and this brittle voice say to you, she is fine, just a little insurance. <sighs> And that's what you hear, Flynn. Um, I'm going to look over to Xander and the professor. Now, at this point, none of you know what Zilvana has no what Zilvana did in the night. <clears throat> Am I awake yet? Are we all awake? I mean, so this is morning. I assume that your long rest has, has completed. Uh, the, the professor obviously would notice this first as he was, he doesn't sleep. Uh, and then mm -hmm. I assume professor, you made some sort of ruckus or noise. I don't know. Are you, are you alerting everybody else? Or are you just trying to be cool about it? Well, well he, he and I were on watch. So I would imagine yeah. that if she were suddenly right. encased in ice, we would arouse people. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. So at this point then, yes, Zilvana, everyone has been awoken. All right. Well, if I, once, once I, wake up and see the mood of the room and then look over. I'm going to like sit up straight and be like, God damn it, LaVistus. 
And so. Levistus is. <sighs> All right. So you remember how um, Delphi was talking to a little kid called Levi? Yeah. Yeah. Who was who was really who was really an arch devil? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's Levistus. Devil. He's yes. the hmm. he's the devil of the fifth level of hell. Everyone, make a perception check. Not Zilvana. Ah. Hey, that's a big old kraken. <laughs> well, I, I like it when you get kraken. Uh, uh, I have a plus zero though, so <laughs> fair enough. Hey, natural twenty Tw- stands. Twenty-two for me. Twenty-two, lovely. A seven. A seven. <laughs> twelve. A twelve. Okay. Okay. So it's, wow, wow. Oh, to be fair, Flynn was super focused on like trying to reach into the mind stuff, and he's still sort of absorbing the fact that an arch devil just chatted back at him. Um, so that that makes sense. Why he's not which we, we, which we also don't know thing, yet. So. Oh yeah, fair, fair. Uh, yeah. So make sure, remember, friends, talk to your friends. communication key to any relationship. Um, so uh, anybody who's sported a, a fifteen and up, like you, notice something very distinctly different about Zolvana's sword, uh, as it seems to glow with this sort of crackling blue light, almost like. Um, the ice on a lake at dawn, it has that sort of luminescent quality to it. And there's a thin mist of frost coming off of it. Did you go That's sh- sick as hell. shopping? Stefano, that looks new. Where'd you find that? Uh, it's very new. So to catch you up, um, Levistus also uh, visited me last night or I visited him, you know, devil stuff. But he, uh, in exchange for Delphi being off the hook, I now am in charge of this army. Uh, And uh, I wasn't expecting Delphi to actually be encased in ice, but he's taking this very seriously, so I can't get out of it. I have to do this. Well, now, to be 100% honest, are you in charge of the army yet? (laughs) I'm not in charge of the army yet. I just, I think what I need to take care of should only be me to get in charge of the army. You don't think Kadroff is, would, I mean, He's just not going to step down, is he? I mean, he's get just That's... walk in and be like, "Hey, Kadroth, I'm the new boss in town." I doubt it. But you said you have to do it alone. I don't have to do it alone. I just I can't ask you to do any of this with me. This is my responsibility now. Oh no! Oh, they don't ask. What? I'm not it's going to be asking if you get my if you get my drift. Well, well, you don't have to ask. Um, yeah, we're saying it's a, it's a non-issue. But. Well, um, uh, I'm going to look at Flynn and Feriel. Uh, I, four hours. That's how long I was in a trance. And apparently all this shit happened. Not sleeping anymore. <laughs> not doing it. I, I don't recommend it. I get so much work done. <laughs> I just want to know why the Celestials are dealing with all the devils all the time. <sighs> you know, angels and devils. Also... I don't know if this is going to impact anyone else's decision, but um, uh, the the, de- the devils in the in the mind in in there. That's not surprising. Devil is in the mind. <laughs> I, know the that, mind. I know what that feels Fear like. Fear is the mind killer. <laughs> I know what that feels I, like. Did, the, the are we doing wake and bake? Past, What's happening so. here? <laughs> it's uh, that's not surprising. Oh, okay. At this it's, moment. Are, are you up? You, you have to be up. You hear the unmistakable voice of Alisar Sulmander from outside the door. Those of you from last game will remember that this is the stable boy who takes care of all of the dire wolves inside the kennel, who Flynn had befriended and gifted him a knife and also gave him some really good advice about maybe not hanging around the care for very long. But 
Did uh, you say dire wolves? Because I was under the impression they were sled dogs, and that's a different thing. I mean, like <laughs> sled dog. Look, look, my heart goes to dire wolves. That's just where I'm at. But uh, the, <laughs> technically, they're just wolf wolves, but those don't sound anywhere near as fun. So, okay. But, I so, fear for this child's safety. Oh, no, he's fine. He's fine. <laughs> So Wait, is uh, this is this the kid that that the Delphi was talking to? That's that uh, is a devil. What? No, 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 no. Wait, the normal kid. Like, so now there's two kids. There's two kids and a devil and a brand new sword so and an army. So the one kid, the one kid, kid wasn't actually a kid. It was a devil in disguise. Correct. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. The other mm-hmm. kid is is Flynn's little friend. Yeah, this is the kid we gave a knife to. Yeah. We've armed the kids now. Awesome. Not well, sleeping yeah. naturally anymore. Any was... more. <laughs> I was, I was trying to figure out what kids. I don't know. Kids like knives. Yeah. And I needed information. <laughs> yes. I mean, okay, that that kind that kind of check that kind of checks out. Nice window. <laughs> Putting your clerics on ice and giving knives to your children. Welcome to <laughs> Old Hard Witch. <laughs> what uh, what do you think he meant by "you have to be up"? Yeah, we should ask him. Hey, uh, Alistair, <laughs> come in here. Sure enough, yeah. Walks in the room. He's like. Oh, good! You're all. Oh my God! Yeah, don't look at that! Don't look at that! What happened? She she okay? She, uh, Are we? She will be fine. Well, do we need to get some? There's help? nothing anyone we, can do. We chisel? are the help. Don't worry, it's fine. Okay. Um. Uh, Thub sent me. He he said that I I need to get you up and that you need it to come with me. Uh, we have to get you into the speaker's office but you can't go in through the main keep that there's there's somebody somebody here for you great great so how are you going to get us in well there's a there's an entrance uh through the through the the northwest uh the 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 teleportation tower that you came in through there's a passageway that gets you into the speaker's office do you Uh, know anything about who it is yeah let's back up for a second is it someone to meet us or someone looking for us I was just told that they were looking for you and that I, I needed to get you in to the speaker's office before they saw you. Well, this has turned out to be a good morning all cool, the way cool, around. Cool, 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 cool. Um, yeah, are cool. we going to leave Delphi here? Do we need to bring her with us? I you... wouldn't suggest touching her. Is there anything we can do to, like, She's very protect cold. her or... Ward I mean, I, th- I, th- I think, I think she's okay in there. I'll like tap my, my stick, my walking stick <laughs> on the ice. I'm like, she's pretty, she's pretty solid in there. I don't yeah, think she's I... going anywhere. Look at that, solid. But what if someone <laughs> comes and just takes her whole block of ice away? I, I mean, I pity, I pity the man who would try to do that. It, I mean, when I touched it, it, it was not great. It's not a good feeling. Yeah, but, but, uh, I don't know. Should we? I mean, throw a blanket on her. I don't know. Didn't yeah. just tell everyone she's sick. Very contagious. Yes, let's I, do that. We can we we can lock the the keep door. Uh, it, I mean, it, it's can at we least... can we lock the upstairs door? The the latch above. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, sh- you should be able to to latch it from um, underneath. All I'm right, gonna pull uh, a page out of I, my. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work on my that. Field DM. Dig it. All right. So Xander, you're heading up the stairs and like, mm-hmm. sure enough. Yeah. You see a, like a, a very rudimentary kind of bolt system that just kind of goes across the way there. It was meant to obviously keep people from coming down. So that's a, that's a, that's a quick catch. Huh? Ah, so. uh, mm-hmm. should I, should I tell the, uh, the guards upstairs that uh, she's contagious and that's why I'm locking this thing. I wrote a note. Don't worry. It says, it says, don't touch. Very ill, very contagious. And I'll should we put that on the outside on the of the door? Nope, just on the bed, right, right there. Well, but if we maybe we should write quarantine but, on the but, door. But we're, but no we're, one knows what that is. But we're locking the outside and the inside yeah, door, so saying, no one's going to be in. Even there. in today's day and age, no one knows what that <laughs> is. So, woof, um, topical. Womp, womp. All right, friends. So I'm going to say. You might want to inform the guards who are up in the barracks that if they want to come down, they're going to have to come down the other way. Um, but yeah, let's inconvenience these guards a little more after we kick them out of their bedroom <laughs> and then say, by the way, take the long way around. They love us. <laughs> We're their yeah, favorite. I, I'm, I'm going to just slam the bolt as, as loudly as I can, making sure they know that I just locked it just to piss them off a little bit. 
<laughs> All right. I guess I don't need to have you roll to persuade then. Okay. Good. Nope. <laughs> All right, cool. So you latch the bolt on the um, the overhead. Yeah, it's like shwack, quack, and then I like pop it a couple of times, like pop, 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 just to make sure it's it's good in there. All right, excellent. Just making a spectacle of it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, friends. We throw in a blanket over Delphi and uh, taking a stroll. Yep. Excellent. All right. So, uh, Alice. You, Alisar seems very alert, uh, and he himself is, but he's like, just follow me, stick to the shadows, m move quick, and, and we'll we'll get across the courtyard, no problem. Uh, right. Hold, hold uh, Alisar, Alisar, you said? Alisar? Yeah. Hi, Xander. Um, which Xander. building did, uh, the people that are looking for us, which building did they go into? They're in the main keep. And how long ago did they get there? Well, let's see here. You slept in a little bit this morning. They got here at about uh, 10. They've been in there for at least an hour or so. Uh, I'm going to reach out to Tempest and ask her if she can brain pipe into me who she saw going in there. Excellent. So uh, Tempest was keeping watch on top of the tower, I believe. She, she Yeah, like, like on the tower and then kind of like, loops she was she was checking in on the party and once they got back she's just kind of general patrol and doing math to see if she could carry yeah. me out so uh tempest tells you that she sees three dog sleds in the courtyard uh the sleds themselves seem to be loading down with various and sundry goods uh it looks like some sort of traveling caravan there is a black flag with a golden paw extended from one of them. And she watched a group of four individuals walk into the main keep. She says they looked like, uh, they had this, they had the appearance of a, of a, of a party of adventurers or at the very least a, a ragtag group of bandits. Like it, it, tread carefully, Xander. Ooh. Okay, and I will I will tell the 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 rest of the party what what she saw. Um, uh, does, does anyone that does flag anyone description ring any bells for anyone? Yeah, black flag with a golden paw. Who wants to Who wants to roll for ooh, history or yeah? Uh, I'll yeah. roll on that. I love history. I don't, but I want to uh, roll. I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, I got an 18. I'll do that too. Yeah, she doesn't. 16. No, God, that's a horrible, it's just bad. All right, friends. So I'm here in 18, 16. A five. <laughs> five. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a, a horror show over here. Don't even, don't even look this way. I'm still processing the images she gave me. So that's why my history was so bad. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. I love you. All right. So um, those of you with uh, my, my, I believe I heard it, 15 and 18, uh, you remember from way back in session one that you were gifted a quest from a certain ex-adventurer dwarf mm -hmm. and that she had asked you to be on the lookout for a man by the name of Seth. Sefik Calto. Kelto, and that he was in the employ of Torga Icevane, who was a purveyor of goods across the Ten Towns. Most notably, she travels with her dog sleds from town to town, will set up shop, deal with various and sundry items that she may have come across, uh, and then uh, head on to the next town. Her business card is a uh, black flag with a gold paw on it. And who does who does Sefik work for? Torga Icevein. Okay. 
And so... They're, they're, they have the bandit look to them. They're here selling things that they may or may not have acquired legally, and that's just kind of okay with the towns in general? I mean... Given the sort of loose rules of Icewind Dale, wherein it's more of a don't ask, don't want to know sort of thing, mm -hmm. uh, if you've got things that... If, if they have things that you need to buy, you'll buy them. You may come across a knife that still has a little bit of blood left on it. You know, like sus events. Um, Zilvana, yes. roll, roll me a perception check at advantage. Okay. Perception check. I have to get used to all my things. I know, right? Well, again. <laughs> or else do this. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Dusting off everything. Okay. Okay. So we're at a 22. A 22. Fantastic. So at a 22, as a bard in Icewind Dale, you have heard rumors that one of the side businesses that Torga offer, offers is bounty hunting. Okay. Which may or may not pertain to one or more people in this party. Right. <laughs> Sefik well, was um, also in town at the time of all of the previous murders also. At, that is true, ladies and gentlemen, the professor has it. You are currently, presumably, in the midst of the cold-hearted killer. Yes. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I vaguely remembered I've been over here trying to, like, plug in oh, my Sethic. external drives to find my old... Oh, yeah, Amy's like, like, that's the person, but I don't exactly Sethic. remember. Sethic is yeah. the one with, like, the crazy-ass blue eyes, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Weirdly yeah. enough, that same color blue eyes, which your sword currently seems to be rocking. So Oh. Go me. Ice blue. It's all the rage this year. Yeah. Um, and I, I remembered this bounty hunting thing, like as Yes. Okay. So yeah, yeah. You like as oh they God. as um as Xander like relays the information to you about the 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 dog sleds and you know the people walking in you're like holy sh that's Torga Ice Vein and then Alisar as well will help assist this she's like oh yeah yeah no they show up every now and then to sell stuff and uh and you know various trinkets and things that we can't usually get from an, uh, the normal market in town I mean they they seem like a, a gruff individuals and but yeah. you know they don't hurt anyone that I know of all right mm. I, and I I make a side comment to whoever is close to me saying, except for the bounty hunting. Right. Awesome. Um, so shadows, you say? Sticking to the shadows? Yeah, stick to those shadows. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> All the way up in those shadows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> DM, is this going to involve stealth rolls? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I just, oh, I just know. Great. I just figured I'd I'd go with like where yeah. you guys are most awful. All right, so oh, God, shall will we? it be a group role at least? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'm not that cruel. <laughs> oh, good, 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 yeah. good. For those of you who don't remember from our previous games, uh, the way in which we do group rolls on this, sometimes I'll do a group check, wherein the majority of the party has to pass the check, which gives them a little more leeway in terms of the success or failure of an event. But may the dice gods be ever in their favor. Let's get cracking. So, uh, shall, uh, shall we, friends? Let's get cracking. Remember, right. can't, can't spell dice without ice. So... <laughs> All right, stealth checks. Can't spell right. dice without horrific failure. <laughs> without die. <laughs> um. Ah, uh, yes. okay. Nineteen. Dirty twenty-six. Tw wait, a twenty-six? Dirty, dirty, uh, no, Oop. six. 
Oh, a si- oh, okay. <laughs> the so, number six. <laughs> all right, so let's 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 go around the table, around the campfire, if you will. Uh, Xander, what did you roll? Dirty twenty. That is a pass. Uh, Professor, what did you roll? Six. That is a fail. Okay, so uh, Fariel, what did you roll? Twenty-seven. That a glorious pass. Flynn. Nineteen. Nineteen. That's a pass. Okay, and last but never least, Zolvana. 19. 19. Ba-boop. There it is. So with a, a roll of four to one, you manage to make your way across to the center of the courtyard. So uh, as Alisar sort of has you sort of stick to the shadows and he's having you hug the walls, you are getting about the halfway point. Now, friends, I need a second stealth roll. <laughs> uh, stand by. I'm trying to figure out where we're going to here. Oh, so I'll go ahead and ping it on the map. If you so, we are headed to this doorway here, which is the uh, keep that has the portal in it. Gotcha. Just trying to keep the stream map. No, no, no. Appreciate looking, you. Looking good. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, we got to do this again now. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can I use my old roll? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Okay. No. All right. Just thought I'd thought I'd ask. All right, so let's 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 go let's go from the bottom to the top, my friend. So Zilvana, you rolled a twenty-three. That is a pass. Flynn, you rolled a twenty-one. That is a pass. Fariel, you rolled a twenty-five. A twenty-five, <laughs> solid. And of course, oh, professor. Uh, professor, four, fourteen. Fourteen. Look at you. Not a pass, but close. Um, <laughs> and then, buddy. <laughs> 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 yes. You tried so hard. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I rolled an 18. An eight, an 18 is a pass. All right, yeah, dig it. Okay, cool. So you make your way across the courtyard to the Northwest Tower. Mm. Yes. Excellent. So as you find yourselves in the Northwest Tower, you are greeted by none other than Kadroth, the current leader of the Knights of the Black Sword. Ah, my friends, good to see you. I'm so sorry to uh, awaken you in such a a startling fashion this morning. I trust you slept well? One, wait, uh, one, two, three. You seem to be one short. Alisar, was I not clear that all of them should be brought to the tower? Uh, our our sixth is is feeling a bit under the weather. She has a a very bad chill, and she may have picked up something in in the ice cave. So we're we're gonna we've covered her and let her sleep that off a little bit. She's 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 unwell currently. We've posted some warnings to have everyone kind of leave her alone. Ugh. Well, that is unfortunate. I pray she stays away from everyone and recovers you know i think i think she's just gonna lay there and and just just chill out for a little while um i mean you you have no idea the the time we had in the ice cave and trying to shoot those guys out the ice hole it it, it was a whole thing i see i see well i find myself at a bit of an awkward impasse with you at this moment i have offered you the care and comfort of my keep only to put you in peril of some rather unsavory characters who have come looking for you. Now, I I would gladly help defend members of my cult, and uh, so I trust you have considered my offer? I'm just going to turn to uh, <laughs> Zalvana, <laughs> just like, mm? Mm? Yeah, I will look to Zalvana as well. <laughs> mm? Mm? Mm-hmm. 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 Yes. The, we, we will, we will help. I will help. Ah! The vistas be praised. I knew you would come to your senses with your fine work. We can go ahead and rid ourselves of the Durgar scourge, which is bringing low my great master's work. But enough of that. We'll have time for celebrating. Now, how to deal with the problem that we currently see in front of us. A, are you familiar with 
Torga Icevein? By by reputation. I see. I see. Well, then you know it is her reputation to procure uh, wandering individuals, uh, people who are lost or not looking to be found. Now she has come looking for two such individuals, and I would be remiss to turn over my new friends to such an unsavory character. Which two? I believe she was looking for something about a uh, Pasha's wife and, and, and uh, an indiscretion that was had. Someone from one of the sword cities, I believe. Uh, she said the, the wolf knight and the angel bard. I can only assume angel bard is our dear <laughs> friend here. And you, my friend, bear rather wolfish features. Yeah, I know my aesthetic. <laughs> yeah, that's my I'm on brand. So. <laughs> great, 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 great. Lynn, were you involved in an indiscretion? Uh, define indiscretion. Did you sleep with a married woman? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, then, then yes, that would that would qualify. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah. That yep. Mm-hmm. Nailed. Hammer. There it is. All right. So, uh, were you there? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, were, did you tell her you were built for speed? Sorry, I just I I had to throw that one out there. I just had to. I couldn't let that one go. Apologies, build, baby. <laughs> <laughs> We all remember those dance moves from the Ice Giant. Oh man, it was <laughs> glorious! War flinging, indeed. Mm-hmm. So, um, how much is the how how much is the bounty on our heads? That I was uh, not uh, I was not informed of. I only was told that they were looking for some individuals and that they had heard rumors that they had been seen around the care. Now. I, of course, uh, denied any uh, involvement or knowledge that you have been seen around the care, that we did have a group of adventurers who had wandered through a night or two past, but had since moved on, perhaps to uh, to Care Koenig uh, along the way. But that seemed to at least placate them for the time being. They are finishing up their meal in the main hall and will look to depart this afternoon. Uh, Zilvana, Flynn, I wonder if I might talk with you in my office about uh, precautions that we could take. We can talk here. Oh, no, I, I see, I see. No, I, of course, we could all chat, but... Well, I, go, going to your office takes them through the cafeteria where they're eating, right? So that would be very dangerous. Oh, oh, not in the least. Uh, there is uh, other ways around the care. But Ooh. that being said, uh, Zalvana, Flynn, I, I would uh, still like to talk with you, especially you, Zalvana, since you have so eagerly joined our group. I wish to discuss plans with you on what we need to do for the future of the Knights of the Black Sword. All right. Yeah, 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 let's have a, let's have a talk. Lovely. All right, then. So... Kadroth goes to the wall and pushes, and as he goes ahead and does so, he reveals a passage that opens and goes right through the wall. Uh, My friends, since you, of course, are not the target of this pursuit, you may now return to your keep and keep your heads down. Uh, we, of course, can give you robes befitting members of our cult if you wish to blend in a little more. Uh, and I'll send food around for some dinner or perhaps breakfast. Uh, or, or, Professor, you look like you haven't eaten at all. Oh, clearly you're, my words leave you speechless. Almost, almost <laughs> muted, in fact. We'd prefer to stay if we could. Ah, well, 
then um, I will, of course, show you uh, into my waiting room, at which point uh, Thu will be able to bring you refreshments of the sort. I would ask that you not enter into the main hall just yet, as I myself uh, uh, wish to see the party gone before they catch eyes of you. <clears throat> All right. Of course. Uh, that seems wise. Sylvana, Flynn, would you be so kind? And so, uh, sure enough, you... Uh, you go ahead and you can move through the secret passage into Kadroth's office. And I guess we will move to the waiting room. Yes, and so, uh, oh, party members, oh, mine, uh, you can go ahead and move in. Uh, Alisar uh, sort of looks to Flynn as he goes and like tries to wave at him and tries to catch his eye. And I'm like, Flynn, yeah, Aww. you give him a little, a little nod and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> and he, like, and he, oh. he dashes back out uh, and then he's back uh, to his room. All right, excellent. So I have the Professor Xander and Fariel all in the waiting room. And sure enough, uh, as you come in, sure enough, Thube comes walking through and sits in, uh, gets into the room and says, <clears throat> I understand that you have spoken with Kadroth this morning. Is there anything you require? Uh, I, I'm going to speak kind of very lowly, just so we don't we aren't heard through the door. Uh, maybe maybe a little breakfast or or, or, or something. Uh, nothing too fancy. Um, we're just trying to stay low profile at the moment. And I will motion toward the door toward the cafeteria door. You did mention possibly outfitting us with some some robes of your order just to to make our movement around the care a bit less conspicuous ah yes of course uh, uh doesn't seem like a bad idea no so, uh, so uh, small breakfast at robes yes i will see to it thank you uh, thank and you then uh, also some tea if you wouldn't mind if you could see your way to some tea i would appreciate it tea robes small breakfast Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you please. And then uh, Thube goes ahead and walks back through into uh, Kadroth's office. Do we, can we hear any snatch of conversation as he opens the door and passes? Uh, uh, so like, yeah. So as the door kind of opens, Kadroth is like, ah, oh, oh, this, this, these headaches that we must deal with as, as leaders of our people, right? So, and then like the door shuts. So, uh, Zolvana, Flynn, yes. secret, secret. Oh, snap. Oh. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. <laughs> My friends. Ah, oh, it's so good to see you both. Now, uh, now that I have you here in this room, I, I wonder, uh, what I might do to help you out of this predicament? Besides getting them to just leave? Yes, yes. Uh, questions will come up and eventually I'll well, they'll know that you are here. So that being said, uh, should we deal with this problem now or later? Oh, that's a good. That's a good question. Um, I, Savannah, how do you feel about dealing with this problem now? Because I, I figure they're after you for something, right? Uh, yes. Uh. <laughs> I was thinking later, actually, um, mainly because I don't know. We don't. We don't know. We don't know what their capabilities are. We don't know how strong they are. Um, well, here, here's a, here's a question I got. Um, even though we're, we're still on sort of kind of the introduction basis on joining your whole group here thing, but if it were to uh, pop off, as the kids say. Um, would your people be be in on this fight or would it just be us handling it for ourselves? Well, as members of the Knights of the Black Sword, you will, of course, have our 
aid and we would seek to protect you as we would one of our own, as you are now one of our own. In fact, I see something very different about your weapon this day, Zolvana. Oh. I don't know what you mean. I had a, I may have had the wizard enchant it. The wizard. Or sorry, Xander. Not the wizard. Ah, yes. He's a a powerful wizard, that one. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, surely. Um, So, uh, the problem you wish to have dealt with later? Oh, so. Delvana, hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. All right. So they're over, they're already in there. Yep. Eating. Um, I don't mean to be be bloodthirsty about it, but it's just they're they're just sitting in there waiting like fish in a barrel. Um, unless you've already sold this out to them. Uh, <laughs> Why? <laughs> that would be precisely what I have done. Oh, good. And you see good, Adroth good. pop a, uh, a potion, and he instantly disappears. Um, telepathy right to, uh, right to the, prof- the professor. Got it. Uh, hey, friends. Roll initiative. They can't hear! They're not here! They're not back yet! <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> Oh, oh, this is just, oh, Jesus Christ, okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh, shit, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. All right, that was. Absolutely. Uh, so, sure enough, uh, you you hear, uh, as, as you are currently just sitting in the room, sort of waiting for Thube to return, he comes back, and professor you get a rather urgent message from your source and then shortly after that flynn's cry uh so flynn who do who do you who do you, who do you, who do you telepathy in that moment uh cuz i can talk to both xander and the professor right I believe so. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, it's a trap. Weapons up. Weapons hot. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever our ghost sign is. We don't have a ghost sign. <laughs> I thought you guys had established a ghost sign here. All right. I look at, I look at Xander and Farewell and say, "We got to go." And I charge <laughs> through the door. So as you go to hit the door, I would get- actually like to telekinetic shove it. As I on as I run toward it, I dig it. Okay, cool. So, uh, which I believe is actually a saving throw. So I don't know if I can actually do that, but we'll give it a shot. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mostly, it's just a slightly stronger mage hand. So. I don't know how effective this is going to be. Let's go ahead and do that thing, do that thing, do that thing, and remove all. Click. All right. See, so yeah, as a bonus action, I there can attempt to shove a creature, and that creature must make a strength save. So I don't know if we can tweak that to work on a door, or if I should. You just want me to try something else? Um. So I. Th- I absolutely, so I think you can just aim that attack right at that door. Uh, Cause let's see here, teleconnect shove. Good, I see Flynn on the board, I see Xander on the board. Uh, friends, be sure to click your tokens uh, so that you can go ahead and throw yourselves ah, in, shit. In, into the fray. I forgot to do that. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with it. I, I did already roll, should I hey. roll again? What's that? Oh no, so you can go ahead, uh, let me go ahead and take a look at what your role was. Zylvana, I have a 15.6. I'll go ahead and yes. just go ahead and put yourself 
uh, on that board and I can go ahead and fill that in for you. So go okay. ahead and roll, roll again and we'll fix it. <laughs> Forgot. <laughs> well, bigger than I am. Well. All right then, so I have a 15. I love how like super, super dodgy all you are. So that like, it's always like 19.13, you know, it's like, oh, okay, great. Need, need a burrito. <laughs> well, that, burrito. those are our uh, uh, deck scores. Yeah. To For tiebreakers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I have the lowest decks, do I not? And as a 13 uh, for the lowest decks, that's not that's not bad. We are a decks build party for sure. <laughs> oh. Also, while we're setting up, Pixie did donate 500 bits. So what? that's a D20 inspiration to somebody. That we might want sure that before is. combat starts. Well, let's uh, go ahead. Well, yeah, I, let's... I can I can roll the inspire button and just do it in in one shot, Ryan. Unless you have an inspire button. I I, I certainly do not. Go ahead and, and and do your thing. Do your thing. Oh, hi. You know, there we go. There we go. I don't know why it rolled twice. Uh, I. It's rigged. I wow. already. Ha I already have D twenty inspiration. Uh huh. So uh -huh. next up would be Zalvana. Zalvana. Okay, good. Do you do you well, have D twenty? Um, It'll be on your sheet, the little sunrise next to the walking speed. Yeah, I actually have D twenty inspiration. All right, then. Uh, F and no! DM, unfortunately, is. Curses! The... Damn it. F and Yay. DM, you get a D twenty. Oh yeah. Thanks for trying, Pixie. Thanks, Pixie. <laughs> oh no. All right. Oh wow. Cadrith coming in low. All right. Then of course, let's go with I don't see him in the room. Where is he? Oh, mm -hmm. He magicked himself away. Where is where is he indeed? He drank a potion and then disappeared, so he might be invisible. Invisible. Inbe that's invisible. Hmm. That's all right. Definitely is it? For that shit. Is it? <laughs> is it? Okay, yeah. That's, that's but it's like true, a I go bullshit. All right. And then it's okay. Oh, good gosh. All right, so. All right, friends, yeah. I think. Oh. Resort the turn order ascending. Oh, absolutely. Do we have all the players now? Let's see here. I see one, two, three, four, five of my mad, mad players. And then, oh, where are the other bad guys? Oh, I figured they just weren't going to get a turn. I oh, yeah? Is that, is, that what you, is that what you thought? That's what I was hoping. Oh, yeah? yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you're in there. Well, all right then. All right. Well, let's 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 get this party started, shall we? Yeah. While while we're finishing that up, remember we do have a giveaway running exclamation mark giveaway to get in that for a fifteen dollar store credit to the Kraken Dice store, and pray for us, everyone. That's fighting music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Gotta remember that's okay, because Sefik, <laughs> Sefik has a zero for his initiative. That's great. Yeah, right? There we are. And oh, that guy. This is going to suck. And then... Ooh, good job, Torga. All right, oh. then. Bad so. job, Torga. <laughs> boo, Torga, boo. <laughs> All right. So, friends, uh, let's go ahead and do this. Descending order. All right, friends. So at the tippity top, we have Torga Icefane. Oh. Torga Icefane, who looks at the two of you and says, well, looks like my payday just got doubled. And so she goes ahead and moves towards, uh, she's gonna move towards uh, Zolvana. She's gonna come out swinging. Uh, she's gonna go ahead and Make a multi attack. Can we get those dice out of the way? Okay. What, those, those dice? Oh my yeah. God. This uh, Okay, so uh, first swing is a six, which is a critical fail. Madeline, if you just click on the map somewhere, they'll disappear. Okay. That's true. Thank you. 
All right, so uh, first first swing is a six, which is I imagine is not going to hit your uh, AC, uh, uh, Zolvana. No, it is not. Uh, the second one is a twenty-four, which I imagine will hit your AC. And that's correct. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. And then for that last little dig, uh, since you rolled that initial crit fail, she like overcommitted with the her scimitar or her uh, her axe actually in this case. So she overcommits with the axe and then tries to come back and clips you with the butt or the shaft of uh, her stick. And so that's actually, so she gets a little bit of slashing damage, but uh, doesn't get to do that final attack. So you take a total of seven slashing damage from that initial attack. Professor, you are up uh, the door. D- DM, before, before Professor and I have our goes, since we were psychic by Flynn, do, do he and I have any chance for anything before the initiative starts? No, because it was a trap. It's a trap. Yeah, it's a trap. Okay. So. So, Professor, uh, you are currently on the other side of a locked door. Your two, your two compatriots, or actually, your one compatriot shouted to you, it's a trap. So. Um, so my... Did I already attempt to telekinetic shove this thing, or? I believe you did, or I believe that was your initial uh, attack on that bad boy. Yeah, so did it's that either. have any effect? You learn mage, uh, shove one creature. When you do so, must succeed on a strength saving throw, or be moved five feet toward, okay. Interesting, so as you go ahead and like tell, try to telekinetically shove the door, um, the, the door like manages to stay on its hinges. It doesn't like it doesn't have a strength saving throw per exactly. se. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's got a. What's your uh, what's your proficiency bonus? Uh, proficiency would be a six. My my proficiency bonus is a two. My spellcasting modifier is a six. Okay, so six two is eight, and then uh, the ability modifier of the. Sc- Score increased by this feat. Uh, do you have anything else to add to that eight? No. All right. So uh, with that eight, it goes. Boom, this is a solid door, and the door that leads to like the speaker's office, previous speaker's office, current speaker's office. Um, so it's pretty solid. So y- y- you need to maybe uh, get a little more forceful with it. Yeah. Or try lock picking. But. <laughs> Uh, what else do I have? Since he's put a locked door in there, what we have is two dead friends on the other side of it. I mean, he's not wrong. Um, Don't worry, I'm only like a million miles down in the initiative order. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. When, when we rolled out the initiative for this bad boy, I was not expecting the professor to somehow outpace <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> yep. And uh, a lot so too. With the uh, telekinetic shove not working, I'm gonna just run up and try to kick this door. <laughs> it's all I can. It's all I got. No, I love it. I love it. I imagine that's some kind of strength or athletics. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Uh, that's actually just gonna be uh, an unarmed uh, strike if you're trying to kick it. So. Um, okay. You you do that. Try to do some damage to this thing. Uh, natural eighteen. Nat- okay, okay, that that. So that if connects. I get to add my proficiency, that's a dirty twenty. That sure, that is a dirty twenty. It absolutely goes ahead and beats the uh, the uh, the DC of the door. Mm-hmm. So uh, go ahead and do your damage. Uh, well, unarmed damage, I believe, is one plus strength, which brings it up to a one. There it is. There it is. Uh, a whopping total of one damage to the door. So he solidly connects it, and he goes. Boom. <laughs> is my i'm pretty sure i just blew my knee out yeah yeah you may hear it be like Cram! Oh, God! Like, yeah so it's where's herrick when you need him yeah Absolutely. Oh, God. there is no plan i'm just gonna run at it yep yeah. all right and then i'll just uh nope okay and i'll just kind of hobble off to the side i'm right. out of ideas I'm out of ideas. That's all right. Xander, you're up. Uh, well, my goodness, this is this is just uh, crap weasel. 
I guess I'm going to make sure that this door... Can I see if this door is locked on the inside? Oh! Um, so it is not currently locked, but you can lock it. I would like to lock that door on our side as hard that as... That seems fair. Will, that as seems hard like a as wise quietly, decision. Quietly, but like as locked as it will lock. Uh, and then... I... God almighty. I guess I will... Um, door is wood. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that the DM trying to burn off one of my only two, like, second level spells? Hmm. No, I think I'll just wait for Feriel to, to smooth unlock it. I'm just, okay, I'm just I'm just sprinkling them breadcrumbs, baby. Just trying to, you know. Baby, I know it burns, but I ain't get that. I ain't get that many slots. So the my two choices are I can bring Tempest in here or I can start Blade Song. You're starting Blades. Well, I'll let you. You can you can hash that out if you wish, but all right. All then right. I then I'll do that. I'll bring I'll bring Tempest in here then. Excellent. Okay, so Tempest, which I believe we had on the map, though I do not see her. Uh, all right. So I'll bring Tempest. Uh, you want Tempest into the room? Yeah, I brought her in. Thank you. all uh, thanks for bringing Tempesty. All right, then. So from there, hey, you're you know anything about doors? Huh? Hmm? So ooh, she, ooh, 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 doors? Do you know anything about them? All right. So. Zilvana, it is your turn. So yeah. Torga Icefane comes charging at you. <laughs> Overcommits, digs into the carpet, comes back, catches you a little bit on the backhand, and then a slice goes across your arm. Awesome. You uh, and Flynn are currently in a fight for your lives. Yep, 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 yep. Um, so, um, I forget how to play this game. So, <laughs> um, all right. I so, get um, really anxious. <laughs> <laughs> like, right, so I'm, I'm going to attack back um, with my, my lovely sword. Um, oh, using the yeah. gift. Do it. Do well, it. I mean, it's the only sword I have currently. Oh, did he take your other one? It, he transformed her sword. He transformed oh. it. So I don't even have my other one right now. Yeah. Uh, it's almost as if he gave her very little choice. I know. It's crazy. Weird. Um, Devils, am I right? Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So I have to. <laughs> It's like seriously, I'm like, all right. All right, you have currently to have how to play this game. So you so got I have two to... targets in front of you. You've got yep. uh, Torga Ice Fane and then Sephic Kelto. Torga Ice Fane is currently in melee range with you, which means that they're within the five feet of you, mm -hmm. and you can go ahead and just haul off on that individual. Yep. So you go ahead and click uh, on either your uh, main attack action, which I believe at this point, as the bard, you've got your one attack, and then you've got your bonus action, which you can either use to inspire Flynn, who will be coming directly after you, or mm -hmm. perhaps throw out some nice uh, lusty heals on either yourself or Flynn, but with only seven damage, you all, you all right. I'm fine. Um, um, yeah. So I have to, I use the, um, I use the, the 20 die, right? Plus something. Oh, so uh, do you want to go ahead and, are you, roll, <laughs> you rolling them sweet, sweet, honest to God, clickety clacks? Yeah, I was going to. I love it. Yes, indeed. Please do. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and take a look. At, let's go to the board, shall we? Right. So her new weapon, oh, friends of mine, is the Frost, Band, Frost Brand Rapier. This is a nice. beauty of a weapon. Whenever you hit an attack using this magical sword, the target takes an extra 1d6 cold damage. So uh, you go ahead and roll your d20 and add plus five to it. All right, that is a 21. <laughs> yeah, 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 that a hit. That a hit. So cool. you then, absolutely hit. Uh, go ahead and roll your oh 1d8 D8. for your initial damage plus three. Um, five plus three, eight. Eight plus a d6. <laughs> plus four. <laughs> All right, dig it. So that's eight plus four. That was 12 points yeah. of damage done to uh, uh, to Torga Ice Vein. This brilliant weapon, so in addition, when you hold the sword, you also have resistance to fire damage, and in freezing temperature, the blade sheds a bright light in a 10-foot radius. 
and into dim light for another 10 feet beyond that. And then when you draw this weapon, you can extinguish all non-magical flames within 30 feet of you. But this property can only be used no more than once per hour. Also, it dramatic as fuck. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. so since um since could this be like a two hand attack? Like could I um I well can I like punch her or something like that with my other hand? So you do have so as you have your uh you you have a you can use a bonus action to go ahead and attack with your offhand oh. dagger. Okay. But that would or, be your bonus. That's your bonus action then. Yeah. Or I could just inspire Flynn. You could inspire Flynn, yeah. That's that's a thing. Or you could also do uh, you have a you do have some spells as well, some bonus action spells. Uh, but again, like you said, you're not that hurt. But Torga yeah, no. definitely took some ouchies. So yeah, I'm gonna use one of my bardic inspirations for Flynn. Nice. Yeah, I got more. Nice. So uh, <laughs> that is currently a D6 inspiration, I believe. Yeah, I think it's still. I don't think it's D8 yet. I think it's still. Excellent. D6. Now, the great thing about the uh, the Bards of Valor, which you are, Silvana, is that you can do combat inspiration. So when you have a Bardic Inspiration die, you can roll that die and add that to either the weapon damage roll uh, when an attack or when an attack is made against the creature. You can it can use its reaction to roll the die and add the number to the AC against that attack. So, okay. so that that's fantastic. So if if Flynn gets swung at or if Flynn wants to do a little more punch with that damage which knowing his psychic abilities he absolutely does um and then i th yeah so i believe you have a d6 inspiration at this i point. rolled a four uh, lovely lovely all right you get a, uh yeah cool um all right zilvana anything else you want to do on your turn mm. other than say um i don't think you want to do this you are outnumbered <laughs> Torga just sort of laughs at you and goes, ha, not yet. And so uh, at that point, Flynn, it is your turn. I don't like the sound of that. Um, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna attack Torga. Uh, wait, who's this over behind me in the corner here? Who's this over behind? Oh, that is none other than the cold-hearted killer, Sephic Kelto. Oh, great. Cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Cool, <laughs> cool, 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 tight, tight, tight. <laughs> mm. uh, is there a chair between us? Because he's in an adjacent square from me, but I don't know if there's like that chair. So Cause... there are, so there are chairs. In, so these 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 orange squares in the room are chairs. But I imagine you can either fucking like swashbuckler it and do like the walkover chair thing to attack him, or you can like kick the chair out of the way if you want. Like Rodney, you work that rent fair. You you, you go ahead and use <laughs> some magic with them words, my friend. So. Gotcha. All right. Well, um, first things first, uh, I'm going to attack um, uh, Sephic. Oh, excellent. Okay. So Rodney goes ahead and moves up to attack Sephic. No, I'm next to Sephic already. Oh, I, no, I see. Yep. I see you. Sorry. I was, I was confused. <laughs> All right. Dig it. So yeah, you're moving to Sephic. Yep. Yep. Here we go. Um, oh, I draw both rapiers. So both of swords course. are out. Yeah. Uh, that's a dirty 20. A dirty 20 will hit. Cool, cool, cool. So here's how we're going to do this. Uh, <laughs> here's here's uh, the tail I weave. All right. So a, a D8 for, for the attack, um, a, a D6 for the psionic strike, and then the D6 for the product inspiration. Good God. All right. So. So four, three, seven, three, ten, two, twelve. So t twelve total. Like twelve total damage. Yes. Out of all that. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not mad, but all right. So. Oh, I'm a little mad. I'm a little mad. <laughs> I mean, I'm not in the room, but you can feel me. Like, mm, really? <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, so you like you you do these beautiful like moulinet twirls, and you like. You bring it across and like uh, like this shimmering blade of death just goes at it and he just seems to like real cool, real calm. Like as it cuts, it doesn't seem to draw blood so much as it just carves ice. Oof. That's fine. I have a second sword. Um, <laughs> that's going to be uh, 21. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, sh- yeah, that'll hit. <laughs> Y'all are coming on so strong with these attacks. All right. Uh, that's only going to be six damage. Six damage. All right. You're not going to pump that up a little bit? Oh, wait till I get some more sonic die. I, I, I'm a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, hey, hey, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not telling you how to live your life. I'm just trying to remind you of all the abilities you have at your disposal. Oh, I know. A wise man once told me, never leave dice on the table. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So, uh, Flynn, that is your action. And, then, uh, oh, and my bonus, you, and my bonus action. So that's your bonus action. Okay. Tapped, okay. Yep. So uh, Flynn is tapped, and that brings us to Sefik. Uh, so Sefik goes ahead and like draws, like holds his hand out next to him, and as he does so, a long sword appears and grows. He sits there and said, like before you, holding an iced long sword, made flesh from him. And he says to you, by the blood of Oriel, she who is the frost maiden, my patron goddess, you will bleed this night. She, our lady Oriel, will have you. And then from there, he draws back to attack. He goes ahead and strikes two times with his long sword. First hit. Oh, bull is a 13. No, no. Nope. No, nice. Nope. You're a dex build, baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the second hit is a 17. Ooh, that meets it. Ooh, ooh, awesome. Yep. So in Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, we do, so normally meet to beat is an absolute defeat. But in my games, I think that's crap because I think a 17 armor should be 17 armor with a possibility of maybe saving your skin. So what we do is we do a roll off. I roll and Flynn will roll. And then whoever gets the higher number, that means that my attack somehow either found a weakness in his armor or it just manages to skate off to the side and miss. So. Sir Rodney, will you roll? I'm gonna take my Kraken dice. Yep, Kraken die, here we go. Take, take a roll on this. Oh, I come out with a six. That's a three. <laughs> oh! Yep, yep. Uh, I love it, I love it. Okay, so with that, you feel his longsword dig into your shoulder as he goes ahead and comes at you point. Can I use a reaction? What's that? Can I use a reaction? You absolutely. Oh. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to use my uh, psionic shield. Um, it's going to only, I'm going to take it like, it'll take a D6 uh, of the damage away from it. Brilliant, brilliant. So he does, uh, so he does seven damage of slashing and seven damage of cold as well. So for a total of 14 damage, but that goes ahead and takes a D6 off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, plus one, so that's five. All right, so you uh, so that fourteen is then reduced down to nine damage. But as the dagger, as the as the tip of the longsword digs in, you feel it, and then this shot of pain, as if like literally an ice burst had just exploded inside your arm. You feel almost like it's numb and useless for a moment. And as you pull back from the blade, that pain immediately starts to recede a little bit. But you know for a fact, you do not want to feel that again. And he looks at you with his cold blue eyes and said, Oria. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's at that point, ladies and gentlemen, that we go to. What do you think? What do you think, party makers? Do we want to try to go through this first round of combat or should we take our break there? I want to know if we get this door open before we take the break. So. Excellent. I'm Excellent. all I'm all for finishing this round because if, right. if she doesn't get right. the door open, then it's a TPK incoming, and that will greatly flavor my break. That sounds good. So uh, no as... pressure. <laughs> so yeah, no pressure, uh, Ryan. You've been off for ten weeks. Come back and fucking kill us in ninety minutes. Hey, baby, don't you worry about it. I I always have a plan, maybe twelve percent of a plan, but it's always a plan. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> just teleport us across the map again. <laughs> I'm not sure oh, Flynn no, has not some ideas. Well. Just get out. The, the plan is a, a very nice funeral for all of you in East Haven. Absolutely. 
So I can perform ceremony as much as we need to on as many dead bodies as we get. I can resurrect so many people at a, just a different time. I'll shoot okay. flaming arrows. We'll do it like Viking style. You know, you get like little yeah. higher going down the, the frozen river. All right. So All at right. this point, uh, I need both uh, Zav- Zalvana <laughs> and Flynn to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, good Lord. All right. Um, hold on. Wisdom, 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 wisdom. Where are you? It's just plus two. Where are you? Yeah. Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Yeah. Wisdom saving throw. Okay. <laughs> My brain. All right. So we're at a thirteen. A thirteen. Oh, you monsters. Okay, as you stand there, as you stand there and you're fighting for your lives in the middle of this office, you hear the unmistakable voice of Kadroth saying, fools, don't kill them, simply get them out of here. And he reaches out into your minds to try to hold your wills. But both of you manage to shake him off and continue to fight. Yes, sir. Good God. That being said, hey, Fario. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna laugh so hard when she decides to not try to unlock the door. I'm gonna go open this door over here. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, your bosses are fighting. Like, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be ready. I'm gonna be ready. All right. No pressure. I'm gonna try to open this door. Naomi, how many times has Fario tried to lock pick in this game? Successfully. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think she tried successfully every single time. There we go. There we the go. Attack, yeah, there it is. There it All is. Right. Okay. I've weakened it for you. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodness is I rolled an 18 on the dice. An 18 on the dice is so, good. That's, that's going to be start. a 25. A uh, 25. That's nice. Yeah. So uh, as you as you go ahead and roll that, that's a beautiful roll for a lockpick. Well done, yeah, Amy. No doubt. So yeah, sure, sure enough, I, I set that DC high and you done did it. So it- Bust the Kraken. So <laughs> bust that Kraken, everybody. And so from there, the door swings open. And as the door swings open, all hell breaks loose. Amy, the, so as you- Pop the door open. Yeah, free movement or, or free action to open a door. But uh, you see, in standing in front of you, both Zolvana and uh, and Flynn fighting with Sephic Kalto and Torga Icefane. Torga swinging an axe, trying desperately to sort of n- like knock Zolvana back out of the room, and then Sephic has just sinks what looks to be an ice an ice longsword into Flynn's arm. Um, <laughs> and Fariel's yeah. reaction is Ooh. just close this back. <laughs> I, I was gonna say she, she's gonna invoke Ryan and just, I close the door. Um mechanically, how do we do um movement through friendlies? Like, am I gonna be blocking this door if I stay here? Should I move? Or will they be able to get around? Like, how does that work? All right, so I <sighs> Mechanically, how do we do movement? So, I think uh, we've been doing double movement to pass through a yes. friendly square. Yeah. It's like yes. difficult you are, so, you are allowed to move through a friendly space, but it counts as difficult terrain because the idea is that you have to get around that individual. Okay, so, in that case, I will just move out of the doorway and nicely into done the room so that um, I'm not blocking right. that area. And I guess I will take my bonus action to just chuck a dagger at um, this one here. Nice, at uh, Torga, Torga. Ice Pain. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Chuck that dagger. 12 plus 7, 19. No, yeah, that'll hit. Do that beautiful damage, which okay. you... You do still get your sneak attack damage for this. Cause she's yeah, cause engaged. engaged. Yeah, because she's absolutely engaged. So make sure you make sure you tally that up. Yeah, let me I mean it's been a while, guys. I know, right? 
So okay. the beautiful thing about having these Two gorgeous, digits. yeah, the beautiful thing about having these gorgeous uh, uh, crack and clickety clacks is that it's really easy for us to roll them and they're gorgeous. However, the math is now having to be done by us. <laughs> Brain. Okay, and then reminds me, it's my bonus action, so I don't add my extra, correct? Yes, unless you okay. have the feat that allows you. I don't think so yet. To add that I'm to your bonus baby. attack. Okay. Yeah. So, that's gonna be so it's just the die roll for the dagger, which I believe is a d4, and then the 2d6 from your sneak attack. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, which I rolled um, a total of 10. Total 10 damage? Yeah, I rolled a 4, a 5, and a 1. Nice, 10 damage to Torga Ice Fane. So as she sits, so she reels back from, or reels back from the attack. <laughs> um, and then the dagger sinks into her, into her arm. She's, ah, damn! And then it's like, have that buried into her flesh. Well done. And that, friends, is where we're gonna go ahead and take our break. So, top of the order, if there's nothing further, is Torga Icefane. So uh, Torga is going to go ahead and take yet another swing on Zolvana Orun. That's not nice. Who insists on just vexing her. So uh, she goes ahead and makes her two attacks. And hopefully she doesn't <laughs> biff it this time. Uh, <laughs> so the first one is a scimitar with a 13. Um, no. Rude. Uh, scimitar again with 16. Yeah, that one gets it. Ha ha! Mm -hmm. So, you go ahead and uh, take your eight slashy damage from, oh. That, oh. from that cut thar. Uh, and then she goes ahead and makes a third and final attack with a, a 12. I imagine does not hit you. Does not. Ooh, yeah, I didn't think so. Three attacks, yikes. Yeah, uh, so those uh, those those bandits, they are uh, they're, they're quite hardy. All right, uh, <laughs> she's gonna go ahead and use her bonus action to pop a health potion, Ugh. which does not uh, which does not do a lot for her, but it does something. Uh, so yeah, so she goes ahead and recovers just ever so slightly, which may or may not help her survive the round. And my friends, we are now off and running to the professor. Okay. Uh, door's open, right? <clears throat> the door is open. Okay, so I'm gonna run in here. Sure, about there. Uh, I look around and, uh, oh, where, where's Kadroff? Uh, uh, Torga. <laughs> That's not what I asked. That's not what I'm. <laughs> is We're a little Torga, busy. <laughs> is Torga Cadroff imminent threat? <laughs> uh, that was a really good disguise. Uh, okay, so bonus action. I'm gonna telekinetic shove Torga then. So I need a strength save from Torga. Strength save from Torga. Lovely. Uh, she will roll her strength save. Come out to be a, oh, she crit succeeds with a 22. Great. So as you go ahead and like reach out to go, boom, try to bring that force push, she just like slams her, the haft of her, of her ax down into the floors and like weathers that storm as it splits on either side of her haft. And she's just like, <laughs> Uh, all right. In that case, I'll try to let's try to mind sliver her. Then I need a intelligence save now. Hell balls. All right. <laughs> now is mind sliver a bonus action? Uh, the telekinetic shove is a bonus action. Ah, saucy. Okay, so intelligence save. Oh, please don't suck. Oh, a nineteen. That also saves. Yes! Brain right. and brawn. Well done, Torga. All right. Uh, so, so, yeah, I'm just looking around for, for Kadroth. <laughs> Where's Kadroth? 
All right, Thanks. excellent. So having done your uh, your bits, we move on now to Xander. Xander, the way is open. The professor has run in going, where's Conroff? So. And gotten zero help. <laughs> <laughs> and no one's very talkative. Hey, that uh, checks out. We're kind group. of in the in the middle of something. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. okay. A little busy. So I <laughs> am going to, I can make it to here with my 30. And then DM, would you say that... Torga and Sefik are in a line from me from with purposes of, of casting a, a line spell, or do I need to be one further? I would so... Let's see here. So if you want to just hit Torga... Well, all right, so check it out. Dex build may have to dex build, okay? That, yeah, that's I'd what like I'm saying. To, I'd like dex to not build. hit Zelvana, but dex build... Might, he has told me before, I'm a dex build. Just just do it, so... Yeah, so, yeah. So it, so if, if you if you pop it off there, mm-hmm. I would say that both both of your party members will have to make the uh, dex save as well. Uh, okay. if you, but if, if I pop it from wanna, here... If you pop it from there, you'll get Torga... And I, I think, and I think, so if you pop it off from there and then just go straight across, uh, bud, you'll get. Well, I don't, I don't know that I have to go straight across. It's oh, I hear you, line. I hear you. But if you go that way, that's then, then dex build, going to have to dex build, but. Yeah, so, but I'll get the other two, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be, it'll be Flynn included in that, but the other two get hit. All oh, right. it's worth it. De- dex, <laughs> dex, you're going to have to dex this time, okay? Uh, uh, yep. I am going to cast Aganazar, Aganazar's Scorcher. There it is. A DC there 13 is. dex save, and it'll be 13 uh, fire damage, uh, or half on a... Uh, okay, so I need a uh, dex save from both the Bandit Captain, uh, Sephic, and, of course, Flynn. 15. Oof, so Bandit Captain comes in at a 10, so uh, Torga comes in at a 10, and uh, Suffolk comes in at a 6, so. All right, so they are both going to take 13 fire damage. Oof, Flynn, dude. unfortunately, is going to take 6. That's fine, I'll make it look good. Um, I'll make it look good. All right. And then uh, I am going to, as my bonus action, um, begin Blade Song. There it is. That's what the people want. And, uh, oh, you know what? I'm going to have Tempest follow up to the door. I'm just going to park her here for the moment. She doesn't have enough movement to really give anyone help and be safe about it. So I'm going to bring her up to there and I will help action her on the next round. Okay. Okay. I'm right next to her. What's that? I'm well, right the, the, the help action has to be against an enemy. Oh, so she would have to be next to the enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah, has to go I in and do a flyby on the enemy, and yeah. she could get to one, but she can't I'll fly see. out of there. Yeah, I'll see, and that's I'll see. yeah, and that's stranger danger for a, a wee little owl. The wee little baby owl. Yeah, wee little baby. All right, so uh, Xander, are you done? Uh, I am. Well then, looks like things are finally. Heating up around here. Uh, Zolvana, <laughs> you're up next. I, had, I guess my final question is, how does how does Torga and Sefik look? I mean, just coming so, into this, shit's popping off, obviously, but how do they so, look? Yeah, so shit's popping off. Uh, Torga seems to have weathered a, a lot of abuse, but is looking a little more uh, uh, worse for the wear. Sefik, that fire damage was particularly interesting to watch on him as he almost seemed to sort of not take the fire damage, but seem to reduce in size almost a little bit. And then it's it's as if like the cold at the heart of him like took that heat. And, and so, yeah, it was very, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy, uh, crazy then I guess it, I, as my turn is ending, my, my last thing to say will be focus this bitch down and pointing toward who I don't know is Torga, but who you have told me is Torga. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Let's do the lovely rapier because that's what one does. Um. All right. So will a nineteen hit? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, 19 will hit. Cool. All right, so you're swinging on Torga. Go ahead and roll that 19. Uh, right. Um, 1d8 plus, was it three? Yes. 1d8 plus three. So six, that would be nine. And then plus four. Oh, plus four. Um, 13 damage? 13. Wait, yeah. That, yeah. yeah. 13 damage. Nice. And nice. then, um, so, sorry, I'm not gonna give Bardic inspiration. I'm gonna fucking use my dagger because I really want her dead. <laughs> do, okay. Um, truth. Oh. That's some truths right there. So, okay, a 21 will hit, I'm assuming. Yes. And uh, dagger is 1d4 plus three. So that'd be another six damage. No, six damage. Oof. Oof to doof to. All right. Dig it. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah, she's, she's looking, she's looking rough for the wear, my friends. Uh, anything else? Uh, Zolvana. Um, no, I think that's it. Okay. I can't think of anything witty. <laughs> no worries. Flynn, you're up. Um, here, I have a question. Uh, would you say that Buddy and I are in a flanking formation here? <gasps> oh my Ooh. goodness. Absolutely, I would. So, when characters are in a flanking formation, i.e. they are on the exact opposite sides of an enemy, they get a plus one to their attack rolls. Yeah, thanks, Sean. <laughs> it's supposed to be advantage. Advantage. <laughs> but Sean plays with it as a plus one. Lord I mean, knows I missed that advantage. Technically, it's an optional rule anyway. Oh, shut up. Ooh, there oh, it is. Oh, and then, and then Pike got oh, dropped off the call. Technically. <laughs> 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 so, um, actually, guys. Um, it's, um actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what I'm you doing? All right, I'm going for the first attack. That's going to be uh, a uh, 18. 18 will hit. Oh, good. Okay. Hold um. On. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little sauce on the back of this with the uh, sonic strike. So that's a seven plus. It's only um, nine damage. All right. Coming coming back around with the with the second sword. Seventeen. 17? 17, yeah. Uh, she is going to go ahead and use her reaction to parry, which is going to push that up to a uh, roll-off. So... Oh, okay. <laughs> go ahead and, and roll off to see if that hits. Come she on. rolls Come a on. 19. Oh, a 7. A 7, <laughs> excellent. So with that, she uh, parries your, your second attack aside. And but she like like blood frothing from her mouth. She's like, "Come on, you bastards!" Right. Um, that's it. That's all I got. All right, all right, dig it. It is Sefik's turn. Uh, he is going to go ahead and. He is going to miss, use his bonus action to Misty Step. And he goes to go, uh, so we'll go ahead and appear right there. Then he is going to go ahead and use his attacks on the man who just uh, scorched the crap out of him. Bring it, fuckface. So he's going to go ahead and flex on, uh, on, uh, on our, our dear Xander. So using his two attacks... He goes ahead and swings. Oh my God, rolls a crit fail. <laughs> and then uh, rolls an 18 to hit. Uh, I'll cast uh, shield as my reaction and he misses. Bastard, you bastard. Uh, and that is uh, gonna be that. So yeah, he, he, that's, that, that's all his, his bag of tricks for that one. Uh, yeah. And that brings us to the well, hell, I mean, he's now he's right in front of me, and 
I still have a scorcher left. <laughs> All right. So, uh, as so, as you stand there, uh, so I, as you stand there, uh, oh. O, o Xander of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Gonna go ahead. Uh, roll. Who who's attacking? We don't know. I imagine an eleven isn't gonna hit you, right? Oh, eleven does not hit me. Fucking yeah. Zadroth. So uh, as you uh, so as you stand. Oh, I, there, I, I guess I thought he left the room because he came. He went off the turn order. So. Oh, I mean, he's not off the turn order. You just can't see him. So, because he's invisible. That's the invisible. So he goes ahead and tries to take a, a, a swing at you, uh, and he does get to roll with advantage. So the first one was an eleven. That does not hit. Second attack is, a, or I'm sorry, the advantage on that is a nineteen. You gonna you know flex on because shields in place. You bastard. shields in place. Ah, oh, you bastard. Okay. Uh, and on that note, uh, that is going to be, uh, that's going to be Kadroth's turn, uh, which brings us to the very last, Fariel. Okay. Mm. Um, I am going to stay right where I am and uh, just shoot some arrows at Torga there. Thank you. <laughs> Shoot them arrows. Uh, twenty-two to hit. Twenty-two to hit. Okay, and and she got some. She got some of my allies all up in her space. Yeah, so that's yeah. Be... That, that's <laughs> real. Sneak attack. That's real. I wish she, she got sneak damage for every person that she was engaged with. What so she fun. would get three sets of sneak right now. That would be amazing. Sounds like you're rolling an awful lot of dice over there, Fariel. Uh, yeah, it. well, three, three d six, so you know. <laughs> oh, Lord. Classic. Fourteen damage. Fourteen damage. Get here. it, Fariel. <laughs> so, uh, with that, that shot, and she drops and say to the floor. Make sure I'm clicking the right token here. <laughs> as buddy, as buddy doesn't believe me until I do this. So uh, <laughs> you gotta put an X on it. I mean, am I wrong? Am I wrong? It ain't real. You're not dead. Yeah. 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 Everybody, you guys remember the guys in the ice cave where they didn't yep. get the X and they came yep. back to oh, life? No. no, you're not wrong. Say, you want to get checks? Get that X. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Nicely, nicely done, Ferio. And that, of course, whoa, takes us. And that. No, is... hang on, I'm not done. Oh dear God! Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that was that was just her first shot. <laughs> well, I only have one shot, but I can move. Uh yeah, I will. I'll move over here, and I'm just gonna take a stab at this guy with my dagger. Oh, and you're flanking now, so it's a plus <gasps> one. It's a plus one. Oh snap! Oh, yeah. Okay, that's a thirteen on the dice plus nine with that extra one, so twenty-two to hit. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, no, twenty-two will hit. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm gonna. This roll only this. has like an AC of twelve, y'all. I'm gonna roll saying. this big old D four here. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> that big old D four. Three damage. Um, really make it stick, though. All right. <laughs> got three. I got three. Every little bit, man. Not every, nothing. Hey, every little bit. All right, so that's three. Yeah. All right. Woof to doof to. And mm, I'm debating what's worse, opportunity attack or eating Xander's next scorcher. I think I'm going to move. Actually, your scorcher is only a straight line, right? Correct. I would know this because I've seen you cast it before. Yep. So if I just step right here, I'm there's in no, the clear. There's no AO. There we go. Now I'm done. Hmm. Now, now you're done. <laughs> All right. 
Dig it. All right, cool. So uh, that being said, let's see. So upon hearing all this ruckus. Great. This fine group. <laughs> uh-huh. It's going to start to move in there. I'm going to get them on that order, but we're not going to mess with that just yet. Uh, so Torga, my friends, is no more. Is Torgon. Uh, is Torgon. And uh, Torgon. Professor, you're up. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to call out uh, Kadroth, where are you? And at the same time, <laughs> cast Detect Thoughts. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, which I can, I can hear his thoughts even if he is invisible, and so I can find his location that way. If he was, if he's within thirty feet of me, I I can hear where he's at. Brilliant. All right, let me see if I've got... It's, it's a specific use of this spell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, nice. Very nice. Yeah, so I love that. So, uh, so yeah, as you, uh, you you actually hear from behind you, uh, is, there any, is there any role for that, uh, Professor? Or is it just like... No, I can hear his surface thoughts, pa like, passively. If I want to read any deeper thoughts, then there's a save involved in that kind of stuff. Dig it, dig it. So then, yeah, so he's, he's fools, fools, fools. And so as, as he's, like, like right behind you. Uh, could you go ahead and give me a ping where he's at? Uh, or just give me a cardinal direction. Is he north, <laughs> south, north, south, east of me? He would be south of you, is south where you me. hear the sounds coming from, or where you Excellent. receive the thoughts coming from. Yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. Does, so that's my. Does action. moving through melee space when you're GI not provoke AOs? That is an excellent question. Uh, to my I, knowledge, I kind of don't think it does. I think you're probably right in that, but yeah, yeah, I know that's that unfortunate because that'd have been like six attacks of opportunities we'd have had on him. But oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, no, no, no. I was thinking that exact same thing. I was just like, I think the whole point is that like they're invisible, but um, but I know that like you like with, with a perception roll, there's a possibility of like, but then that's your action, so it's like yeah, anyway. Um, All right. Uh, so this door that we came in here, I'd like to just kind of step that way and see if I can close that. Is there a way to like close and seal it? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, the, the lock mechanism is still in place as it was not broken. And there's only uh, one point of damage done to it. <gasps> oh, no, no, not the, not the one Tempest is. The secret passage that he brought us through. Oh, well then. Uh, so there is a uh, there is a way to close it, but you were not party to uh, uh, what the mechanism was, okay? Because you only saw the mechanism on the opposite side. So if you try to do the mechanism on this side of the door, you'd have to know like which cobblestone book, what like whatever where the button in the room is to get it to open and close. Okay. So you could do a search for it, but it's not evident to you. Okay. Uh, well, I've already used an action, so I'm just gonna stay here. Okay. And just say, uh, hey, Kadroth's over here. <laughs> if anyone cares. Also, like, Sephic, like, you seem much more better equipped than your employer. What What are you doing over here? I mean, we took her down, piece of cake. Uh, I think you uh, should consider better employment. <laughs> Are you trying to hire the cold-hearted killer? I, I don't know, but this better work before it gets to my turn here coming up next. Because I was going to say, all right, all right. So anything else, Professor? <laughs> nope, that's it. I'm done. All right, dig Does it. Does that seem to turn his cold heart? Uh, he is, abs like, the having seen uh, Torga drop, he doesn't seem to even care. I mean, it was in, in much in the same way that maybe some of you don't like your boss. Uh, she Yes, like, F and DM. 
I am not the boss. I am merely the weaver of tales. <laughs> All right. So uh, that being said, uh, yeah, he doesn't seem to care that she has like like is dropped to the floor and bleeding uh, dead in front of him. Uh, he just seems to have this crazed look in his eye. And all you can hear under his breath is, oh, real, oh, real. She seems to have this effect on people. It's not a great, it's not a good look. (laughs) Mm -mm. Um, All right, so that is is my turn then? Yep. It is your turn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that we about to do the dance again he and i uh and i am going to in a straight line south of me where it should affect no one else Mm -hmm. again cast again azar's scorcher nice so just doing straight south yes love it dc 13 deck save dc 13 deck save all right come on sepik all right so he rolls for his deck save a drum roll, please. <laughs> Jesus, a four. Wow. Yeah. Then mm. he's he's gonna take eleven points of fires. He will. He absolutely will. Them them sweet crispy fire damages. And oh, so I. Why do you uh, hurt me? All right. So is is he looking looking at all? Oh, he's 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 looking away. Yeah. Uh, uh, is, is, is he looking? Is he looking like messed up? Is the uh, fire still doing weird stuff? He, well, so the scorcher is just like a one shot, right? <laughs> and then yeah. it's out and done. Yeah, so it's not a maintain, but like as it as it washes over him, where normally like people get really freaked out by being burned, he doesn't seem. It's a lot sort of similar to like a T one thousand, where like as he gets hit, you almost see like his form in pure ice, and then it sort of then regrows whatever flesh and or clothes he had. But he seems to be taking full damage, though. Oh, yeah, he doesn't like it. He doesn't like it. Okay, good, good, good. I I was I I thought for a moment that I had just wasted uh, another spell slot. Uh, But no, as long as he's taking the damage, then um, then then that's a thing. I am going to. Just because he's a heavy hitter, I'm going to have Tempest um, uh, do a flyby on Sephic and end over here. And I'm going to grant the help action to Flynn. Brilliant. So Flynn will roll with advantage. And then I, hearing what the professor had said and not willing to get too mixed up with this dude, am going to face step... Oh, cheeky monkey. Right over here. Now, uh, this should be around where the professor said Cadroth was, so let me know if I bump into anybody or hear any heavy breathing or anything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm also hearing angry... Uh, we, got, we got some angry people south of us who I can now hear their thoughts as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to deal with that next turn. <laughs> yep. Right. Uh, but burn what you got on him, boys and, and ladies. <laughs> uh, this guy's this guy seems tough. Mm. And that's me. Brilliant. So, Zilvana. All right, we are going to cast Fairy Fire so we can see where um, um, Kadroth is. Cheeky. All right. Nice. Um, yeah. Do I need to roll anything for that, or is it just he gets? Does he need to save anything? So everyone in that area is going to have to roll a a deck save. Yes. Yes. All right. They need a deck save of fifteen. Uh, what's the? uh, Is it a twenty foot cube or a ten foot cube? Twenty foot cube. Twenty foot cube. Yeah. So that's. It's pretty yeah, much this a, entire corner of the room. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was going to say that that's going to be, uh, yeah. Good God. That's, that's everybody. <laughs> yep. You know what? If it lights him up. Yeah. yeah. 
You're not exactly. wrong. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> mm. That's an eleven. That's an eleven for me. Sorry. Uh, does, does, does that mean I'm glowing? <laughs> I'm yeah. going to use that D20 inspiration that uh, Pixie gifted me. Uh, oh. So thanks, Pix. And then roll them for that. Oh, no. oh wait, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's a dex? Yes. Yes. Mm. Okay. Whew. All right. What's our DC? It's 15. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've saved. I hit a 15. I saved. I rolled right. 18. Cadroth saves. Dang it. Does that mean you can't see him? No. So he stays invisible. It means the, ah, yeah, it means the, the fairy fire like doesn't wash over him. Uh, everyone else has this beautiful sort of iridescent twilight sparkle shimmer about them. So I mean, we've did, all we've all saved anyway. I didn't save. I failed. Only okay. Xander. So Xander is a sparkly boy. So yeah, just watch which, out for Xander gets hit and just yeah, which is bad because that means attacks against me have advantage. Yeah. Advantage. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, buddy. That's all right. Hey. Uh, can you, is that concentration and can you end it? It is concentration. It is concentration. Okay. It's up to one minute. Okay. I guess. But you can, you can choose, you can choose to end it. And then uh, since I'm the only one affected, I won't be affected anymore. Ooh. So Wait, did, so I can just end it. Yeah. You did can choose this pass that deck save? Button? I don't know. It, it, I mean, there's no damage, so it doesn't matter. Oh, uh, fair enough. Um, so is it gonna take like my bonus action to end it, or do I just end it? Nope, no action. You can just yeah. No, stop so thinking the, yeah, about the it. thing about your concentration spells is you can choose to end them. Oh, cool. Yeah, then I'll just, just end it that way. Um, Xander okay. doesn't have, um, you know. So it was a good shot. At Thank the very you. least, yeah. we got him to spend his inspiration. It's worth it. Absolutely. Um. All right. So, as a bonus action, I can still poke him with a rapier, or. As a bonus action, you can uh, attempt to do a dagger attack. Okay. No, right. But that's, uh, that's a, and that's against Sephic, yeah. Yeah, Sephic. I guess I'll, uh, I'll, I'll dagger the Sephic, possibly, potentially. Uh, uh, 17. Uh, daggering the Sephic, a 17 will hit. Okay. Um, four plus three. Uh, five. A five. Well, hey, every little bit. Yeah. All right. So as you're fighting with Sephic, uh, you manage to like get the dagger stick and like it, instead of like sinking into flesh, it almost as if it like chinks into ice. It just tink, and like a bit, like a, like a little chunk of him flies off. No me gusta. Gross. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up is none other than Flynn, the fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to cross to the other side of the room, right in front of Sephic here. And you have advantage. And I got advantage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That's going to be uh, a 19. Uh, 19 is a hit, yes. Cool, cool, cool. I'm gonna burn another psionic die. And we're gonna go in here again. Uh, for 11 points of damage. 11 points of damage. All right. That's nice, that's nice, that's nice. And then I'm going to do my second attack on him. Which is going to be a 21. Yeah, 21 will hit. <laughs> or four damage. For four damage. All right. Oof. And that's it. That's all I got. That's all right. All right. And that is Flynn's turn. All right. Uh, so, Sephic is going to go ahead and... Hmm. Hmm. 
Yeah, no, he wants to. He's going to get the truck out of there. So as he takes a look around the room, using his bonus action, he's going to go ahead. He can't. He cannot miss you to there because he cannot see it. Yeah, he can. The door's open. Door is open. The door is open. Yes. I'm sorry. You were to hear, where, which he cannot see too. Ah, uh, fair but enough. He can see. He can jump into the fireplace. Yeah, yeah. He can jump right there, like so. And then uh, that's his bonus action, and he's going to go ahead and go five, ten, fifteen, twenty, and then. Remind me, oh, party members of mine, did you lock this door? Absolutely. You sure did. <laughs> you sure did. All right, then. So, let's see here. He is... I'll hold his ground there, and as he does that, I'm going to have the other jackasses roll in. So, let's see here. We have... While you're rolling jackasses in, if you're not in our giveaway, make sure you're in there. That's my smart giveaway. Um, can we see Thube? Oh, uh, so the passageway is, I believe, currently closed. Yeah, I had closed it. Yeah. Uh, you oh. asked to close it, and you, he said... You attempted to close it, so you, you were trying to find the button to close it, but you couldn't find the button, because in order to do that, you'd have to perceive where the button is. Okay, right. I thought I was perceiving where the locking mechanism was. Mm. Is, it a, is it like a sliding door? I thought it was like a slab it's door. A, so that it's I could a just push no, it's through. a secret passage, so it sort of sli there's like a little trigger that you push, and then it'll open. You saw the trigger see, on the opposite side. All so right. can, can the professor and I see Thub though? In the uh so currently the passage is closed it was lo it was closed as they came through the last time so the door is shut okay it is shut as long as it's shut i don't care yeah yeah no the door is shut the way is shut it is kept by those who are almost dead and uh it may be kept by those as well uh all right friends so let's see here one second while I get this second party rolling in here, though I imagine what with their boss being dead, they're uh, they're not too keen to keep picking fights. But we'll see how well your uh, um, your 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 persuasion rolls for them. <laughs> okay. Persuasion with fists. Ah, <laughs> uh, the fisty persuasion. Wow, that sounded way worse. <laughs> nope. than wow, nope. phrasing. Yeah, oh. nope. that, nope. that, okay. that was that was yeah. a Scott a Scott yeah. Campbellism yeah. right there. I am yep. so sorry for all the children who are listening out there in uh, Funland. Oh my God, horrendous. Okay, so let's see here. Adding to the board, oh friends of mine, we have. <laughs> All right. All right. 15. Good stuff. And then let's get. When you're done with that, I have a, qu a question for you, a game question. You absolutely can have that question for me. Fire when ready. Um, when I asked Tempest what she saw. Yes. She said that there were three sleds and four people who went in. Now, Correct. by my count, the four people that are you're lining up in the order, plus Sefik, plus Torga, is a total of six people. And my owl has perception on all, or has uh, advantage on all things dealing with sight and sound uh, on perception. My so. owl can see everything. <laughs> fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> uh, so, at best, there'd be two guys in there, I would think? Question mark? They keep turned on us, though. 
like we got we got sold out though. Well, true, but aren't isn't everyone in the keep uh, red robed or spiky oh. guarded? Every, everyone in the keep uh, is red robed, which means the the ways in which that uh, Torga and Sefik got in would have to be some other means. Well, of course it would. Carry on. Can't wait till you're in a game that I'm running again. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking kill you the minute the the first die rolls. I I know. I I, I love you so much. All right. How, how is so, he looking? Like jumping away? Does, is he looking pretty beat up? Seven? No, he. Yeah, no, no. There's a reason. So he has that sort of like crazy fervor in his eyes, but he's also looking oh, rough. Gotcha. So that, that, that's a that's a self saving retreat he's making. Oh, absolutely okay. he is. Okay. So, um, let's see, where was I? I was down here at Sefik's turn. He's going to go ahead and try to use his action to open the door, but the door is locked. Okay, okay. he's going to try to do a lock pick. That'll be fun. Uh, <laughs> oh, isn't no, he going to was... run into the, the claymore that we set by the door? Wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, the door. You know, you lock the door from this side, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So he can unlock it. Can he? I mean, Canada. yeah, that's just. I so. think he probably needs to roll like an intelligence check to make sure <laughs> he knows how to. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I'll, I'll go ahead and give a, a general intelligence <laughs> roll here. With a 17, he knows how to unlock a door. So he goes ahead and unlocks this door, which is now open. Yeah. Uh, and that, of course, will bring us to Fariel. Okay. I'm going to step over here. Can I see him through the door there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'd say so. And I'm going to shoot at him. You monster. That's a 13 plus 30, 20. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a, yeah, that'll do it, yeah. <laughs> Nine points of damage? Not Nine points of damage. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Nine points of damage. Whew. Okay, how's he, he look? As like, as you hit him, he like, duh, kind of staggers up against, so he opens the door and then like the shot gets him sort of in his back, right in between his shoulder blades, and he kind of staggers and like hits the wall a little bit. He's up. But because the wall's there, so. Okay, I'm going to, I'm gonna pursue him then and stab him with my dagger. What? Okay. That, oh, that hits, that's a, a, a 25. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, y'all, his AC is 12. Come on now. There's just no need for that. Oh, actually, that was a 26. My dagger's <laughs> Just trifling is what this is. This is just straight up trifling. All right. Three points of damage. Three points of damage. Dear God. All right. He sits like a dagger sinks and he's like, ah, real. And his eyes like are just glowing bright blue he somehow still is grasping onto this hideous unlife that he has but he is still alive curses yeah um i don't think i have anything else to keep him here or to stop the door from opening so here we are Oh no! Oh can no! Can you just can you just come back in here or something? Like, can you can you move at all? Like, um, uh, if she moves away, he gets an AO on her. He does. Damn it! Yeah. Which I mean, I mean, there are worse things. <laughs> yeah. Twenty. I'm okay. So let me make sure. Let me count my movement. I moved five, ten. 15, 20. Yeah. Yeah. Big... I am gonna risk that AO and back up back to this door. All right, so as you go ahead and take that walk back, he's gonna try to swing back at you with a 16? Uh, meat to beat. Meat, okay. Oh, I wish I hadn't have blown that D20, but here it is, here's the roll. Ladies and gentlemen, a nine. 12. 
Oh, hey. nice. Nice. Very so, nice. With Love it. literal chunks of it, he swings wide with his longsword and you duck deftly under it and maybe do even like a little extra like backflip to get away from him. Just it's, like with yeah. like like two fingers up. While just, making <laughs> eye contact. Yeah, yeah just exactly. Like. Exactly. Like zero. You know, given I, I feel like maybe our party name should have been two fingers up. <laughs> 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 we do that a lot. If I remember <laughs> in the other episodes, that, that, oh. that's like our, our greeting, like when we see each other. Oh, yeah, it's like, yeah. He's And fading back. Right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're moving in. Boom. One, two, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Difficult terrain yeah. past his own man. That's true. That's true. Twenty. Mm. Twenty. Twenty-five. Yep. yep. Uh, there you go. Uh, and Just trying to save Feriel. <laughs> yeah, right. This... this 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 beefy chunk of man is gonna go ahead and uh, try to take a swing on Fariel. Yeah, cool. Uh, yes, awesome. Uh, and he will do so at advantage. So, uh, he's gonna swing mace, swing mace. All right, first one's a twenty-one to hit. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely hit. Nah, fam. Nah. <laughs> what? What? Why does he swing an advantage? Uh, he is a thug, and a thug battles ah, from yikes. Pack tactics. Wow. So, yeah, nice, baby, so. nice, nice use of pack tactics for real. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, gotta, gotta love it. So he sees, he sees poor uh, Zevik getting like shanked in. Right? He's like, hey, comes in. And with his mace and just nails you for eight damage. Boom. Okay, uh, okay. Second attack is only a 13, though. That's going to be a miss. That's going to be a miss. So swings wide on the uh, on the second time round. So you, you, you take that first one on the chin. Uh, and then that thug is going to go ahead and uh, stand. Ooh. Mm. No. 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 Now, nah. all right, uh, and then we have uh, the professor. The professor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got some other people coming in here. Okay, here's the plan. Uh, I'm gonna slide past Fariel here. Slide and then. To sell. Yep. Right. <laughs> I'm going to give her a telepathic shove just to give her a little nudge through the door back into the other room. Oh, dear God. Please don't. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's just a little five foot shove. And Ferio, if you want to resist, you can make a strength save. No, or you I can will choose willi- to just go. You, right yeah, you can willingly. Door. You can willingly so, fail that if you wish. So to be clear, y'all are leaving the warlock in the room with the thug yep. and the cutthroat. By his own choice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. All right. Boop. And I'm going to hold my action to cast a spell as soon as the other people walk into the room. Interesting. Now, the other people walk into the room as in once all of them get in the room or the other people walk into the room as in once, uh, like, so do you need all the people from the other room to get in? Is that the trigger? Uh, the trigger is going to be after the the last thug has taken their turn. <laughs> so okay. I, don't, I don't know how to say that more organically. No, no, so so uh, uh, on the on the on the list, uh, Vane so is the... after after Vane. I'm okay, release so when Vane is finishing, Vane. when Vane finishes their turn, your spell will go off. Yes. Good. All right. Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, anything else, Professor? Uh, nope. That's a bonus action and holding an action. So Godspeed, I you am... son of Maine, you prince of tentacles. Yep. Um, all right, Xander, you're up. Mm, well. Well, shit. <laughs> well, shit. Correct. Um, I guess what I'm going to do, because I still, this is, I think, my third 
round yes. of blade songs. Yes. Third round with blade so song. So I still have plenty of blade song. Um, I'm gonna slide to the right. All right. And I'm ten, fifteen. You gonna you gonna you gonna tussle with Bubba? Well, you know, Bubba, Sephic, kind of anybody in a line, really, with me. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> Uh, and before I do it, though, I will say, I will look right at at, at fucking Thug Chunkus here, uh, Azar, and I'll say, yeah. that bitch dead inside there. And then I will cast again Azar Scorcher. <laughs> he has a moment where he sort of goes, as if like he is like, oh. Well, that might, and then the thing, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, so that look, is uh, look, a DC I don't, 13. I don't have quarrel with him, but I cannot let Sephic get away. So, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. All right, so that's a that's a that's DC, some good damage DC, on that DC one. DC thirteen. DC thirteen. All right. So Sephic makes that save, and or I'm sorry, Sephic rolls. Let's see if he makes the save, and then there is a Czar. So. Oh dear God, Sephic, why? Uh, so Sephic rolled a crit fail, and well, uh, so that's double damage, right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's how that works. You know right? what? You uh, miss every shot you don't take. No, you're not uh, wrong. You're not wrong. And um, actually, so uh, Azar rolled a thirteen. So meet. So that's so that's it, a save. That's yeah, it's a save. That, that, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a save. So right. we we so we do meet to beat. We do on the DC. On our, yeah, we do we do on melee attacks. So uh, um, any spell attacks, it is what it is. Yeah, so because magic, magic so, y'all. So he's gonna take. So Azar is gonna take seven, and right. uh, Sephic is gonna take fifteen big fire ones. Oh baby. And uh, as you as you light up Sephic from the high, he just. Oh, yeah. I like like the 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 sword melts from his hand. His hands melt from his hands. Like literally, <laughs> yes. every, it's like it's like fucking uh, the the Indiana Jones where the guy. <laughs> like, oh. It's the beautiful. Thing, like, the last oh. thing you see is like the blue of his eyes that just seem to scream out from inside of his skull as he screams one last time to his goddess Oriel to avenge him. And he then just like explodes. He's gone. Um, And, and, and if I get a, a parting word on that, even though I just blew this guy up in the face, I'll say... I just couldn't let him get away. I'm sorry. <laughs> Zar kind of like turn like kind of like half covered in Sephic and like also a little bit singed on the other half as well. He's just like I'm. Ha I'm having a day. Right. <laughs> I know, buddy. I know, and I feel you. All right. So here you go, buddy. Favorite moment of the fight. There it is. <laughs> Uh, cool. So then from there, uh, Xander, anything else you want to do? Oh my goodness. Uh, I don't want to leave the professor alone. I don't want to stay here and tussle with the czar and all the I other don't guys. I don't want to stay, but I don't, uh, but I, I don't I mean, want you, to leave. You see the professor's eyes glowing and he's kind of thrumming with some energy. Something's about to happen. And I've seen that before, but I still can't find it in me to just leave him in here alone. Okay. Um, do, oh man, you know, you know, I guess what I'm going to do, DM, I'm going to see if my words have had any effect and I'm going to take a five foot step back. And I know that that may trigger an AO, but I'm hoping that maybe telling him that his boss was dead and then apologizing for lighting him up because I had to kill Sephic might yeah. make him at least think and not take the AO on me this time. I don't know if it will. Um, that's that's my that's Xander's thought process. I, I have no earthly idea yeah. if it will work, but that's my thought process. 
Just for shits and giggles, roll me. Uh, just give me a, give me a rando persuasion. Sure. Like the sincerity behind which you were like, hey, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm Fun sorry. Act. I'm sorry. Persuasion. Oh, that's not going to be good. Um, <laughs> I'm actually going to spend my D20 inspiration on this. Lovely. Uh, Seventeen, because my persuasion is minus one. <laughs> Okay. Okay. With that 17, Azar kind of like looks at the blown up ice scorch mark of, of, of Sephic and like kind of registers the fact that he's the boss now. And he doesn't attack you. Kind of like takes a moment and like, Pats his shoulder a little bit to get that singe off. Uh, <laughs> anything else from you, Xander? Uh, no, I'm going to stand back shocked. <laughs> All right. Shocked uh, that that worked. So as you do that, uh, Hell is going to move into the... Uh, well, actually, Hell is going to stand... Uh, uh, so Hell's going to try to walk up in the doorway and then just kind of look at the the remains of Sephic on the floor. It's like, holy hell! What the hell did you do? And it's just like, and then uh, as that happens, he's going to go ahead and bring up his uh, crossbow and sort of point it at the professor who he sees with his eyes all glowing. And he says, you give the word to Zar and I'll put one right between his friggin' eyes. Uh, and Azar kind of holds his hand out, sees the professor kind of getting all twinkly. And he's like, he looks at you, Xander says, can you call him off? Professor, stand down if you can. Professor, uh, I, and, and if I don't feel, oh shit, I can't cast a spell because it's not my turn. Um, yeah. I was going to message him, but uh, I will I will attempt all that I can, like sincerely to 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 get the professor's attention and, and call him off. All right, all right. Uh, fodder, behind hell, gets up on the table and sort of crouches in. He's just like, what the hell's going on in there? Ah, oh, smells awful. Like burnt cold meat. <laughs> it's like burnt sapphic. Oh. <laughs> oh <God. laughs> All right. Uh, and and so uh, both L, both Hell and Fodder are holding in action. Uh, Zolvana, it is your turn. Ah, uh, all right. Um, all right. I think I, I'm i going to give uh, Bardic Inspiration oh, to someone. <laughs> someone? <laughs> That's a good plan. As a bonus action. You've really thought this through. I like it. I know. I can, you can tell. Um, all right. So who's going to do the most damage? Who's coming up? Um, all right, I'm gonna give it to Flynn? Question mark? Um, sure. All right, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna give my Bardic Inspiration to Flynn. I have, I rolled a five uh, and I'm gonna hold an action. All right, dig it. So as you hold the action, God, I love this. It's like a six-way standoff. All right. So as you I, hold the it's kind of like Reservoir Dogs a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. You fucking cop. All right. And so, um, so uh, as as you, so as as, as well, Helen and Father are holding their action. Vane steps down to the south and gets eyeballs on Azar, and then she brings her bow up, shoot, and like sights you, Xander, down the shafts, like. Azar, what the hell are we doing? Where's the boss? And she is holding an action as well. All right, Flynn. Um, I want to pick up uh, Torga's body. Okay, your your dex build, baby, but I love you. All right. Um, uh, I, and I. Uh, because, like, can I hear what's going on in, in the other room? Oh, absolutely. Like, you hear the shouting of, like, what's going on? What the hell is this? Who are you? Like, what's... So, like, you can... It's it's the room next door. So, like, you know... Okay, the, yeah, and, yeah. And nobody's yeah. being subtle about this, so... 
Uh, well, I would uh, think that he could, he would see me kind of just coming past the door, like in a. Not... Yeah, because I imagine you're kind of like. Yeah, so I yeah, so I have I have a hand up and I have my rapier down, like point down. It. It's there not on guard, so. All right. Um, <laughs> so I want to take Torga's body into the next room and be like, "Hey, we're done here." Dig it. Okay, so <laughs> roll me. Uh, oh, it's, it's a it's a body drag, so it's gonna have to be a strength check. Okay. Ooh, it's a nineteen on the die. Hey, plus one. That's a dirty twenty. <laughs> hey, all right. <laughs> So you man, so you actually managed to pretty handle it. Like in that moment when you like you threw that dwarf, you have that. That's that moment again. You're really good at tossing dwarves. <laughs> so is, yeah, Tor- is yeah. Torga a dwarf? Oh yeah. Oh, I oh didn't. My- I'm sorry. I didn't hear you say <laughs> that. that. I didn't hear you say that. You you grip Torga by like the 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 um the collar and by the belt and just sort of heft her up. And then you sort of bring her up and over, and then uh, Farrell, you, you getting the hell out of the way, or you, you blocking that door for him? Um, I am. I don't know what I'm doing. Um... All right, so you've got. Let's see here. So if that's so if you're moving with the body, that's five, ten. Can I get to the doorway? You can get to the doorway, and you literally toss Torga right so... there. But boom, in front of a czar. Yeah, because I was going to say, because since Sefix out, I'm next in turn order anyway, so I could just help Flynn if necessary. All right. So, like, and Flynn, boom. And you say, what do you say, uh, what do you say, Flynn? We're done here. We're done here. And then both, like, and you see, like, so Hell's got his uh, light crossbow up. Fodder's got his light crossbow up. Vane's got her longbow, and she's just like, Azar? At that point, my uh, my trigger has passed, and so I will let the spell dissipate and uh, just give a quiet nod. Okay. As you, so as as you as you dissipate, both Hell and Fodder lower their crossbows. Vane still has Xander in her sights, and I'm still I'm chilling, just okay. chilling like a like a villain, just just hanging out. She's I'm like making nothing sudden. Azar, what's the deal? Um, can I talk to Azar? Yeah, yeah, I'll give you. Yeah, I'll give, you got six seconds. I mean, you said we're done here, so it's not gonna be. You can't monologue, but um, I want to pull out a pouch of gold. Motherfucker, the soul is out. It's invisible. I want him found. Adroth is still here. Nice, <laughs> nice. It's at that moment that you hear the unmistakable sound of the secret passage sliding on its stone as Kadroth, on his turn, activates the hidden passage. Sure does look like Feriel has a shot on that. Oh, you're not wrong, (laughs) but ain't her turn yet. Uh, I know. (laughs) <laughs> as as that happens and Kadroth goes or you assume Kadroth goes you suddenly see Thub standing at the other side of the passage so the people who can see this are Fariel and Zolvana and Thub's eyes are just lit up in a way that you have never seen before. And as he walks in to the room, he just, you have dishonored the name of Levitus. And he just, and as he does so, you see Cadroth, or you don't necessarily see Cadroth, but you hear Kadroth fly across the room over Zelvana's head and hit the wall behind him. And suddenly he becomes visible again, (laughs) slumped against the wall. Thum now speaks with the voice that is unmistakable to you, Zelvana. You coward. 
you would hide in the shadows and not lead with honor or pride. You must now face the trial. And should you fail, your soul is mine. And that is where we're going to go ahead and put a pin in tonight's game, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. 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 <laughs> you're not, friends! You're not, you're not <laughs> wow. right. You're not right, F and DM. Did not have oh. time to kill him. I didn't Back have time. Back with a vengeance is right. Holy...